Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the new psionic options revisited under Arcana and the new subclasses inside. We've got three lovely options here. We have the Psynite Fighter, the Soul Knife Rogue, and the Psionic Soul Sorcerer. Looks like uh, this is kind of an update of the Psychic Warrior uh, revised Rogue subclass and they totally threw away the psionic wizard and the spell ego whip which is great because that's on an upcoming build so just the video is done and i'm not editing it so first thing you get is psionic talent here uh which gives you a psionic die which is kind of a weird thing basically it's something that you can kind of use as much as you want until you roll the best you can it starts off as a d6 if you roll a d6 on it it turns into a d4 if you roll a four on the d4 then it goes to nothing and you can replenish it uh once per long rest basically setting it back up to its highest die amount and the die increases at the fifth level 11th level and 17th level kind of like bardic inspiration die i think those are the levels that it does that so it's kind of like bardic inspiration but you can use it for different things and you use it on yourself and also it goes away in a really weird way but hey that's fine hey everybody future tulak here i read the side eye thing wrong turns out if you roll a one it's going to increase the size of the side eye so it kind of ebbs and flows and there's no real limit on it so if you start off as a d6 and then you roll a one oops now it's a d8 you roll a one again oops now it's a d10 you roll a one again oops now it's a d12 and that can happen at level one or whatever level you start off with the side eye so that's pretty crazy that's very good i'm putting this in into the fighter part but it happened later so sorry i don't talk about that in other parts of the thing anyway so protective field lets you or someone else reduce damage with a little psychic barrier uh it reduces the damage by that d6 plus the intelligence modifier pretty good uh abjuration thing it's kind of like parry from battle master so you've got the psi powered leap which lets you increase the number of feet you jump by twice the psychic die which can be good for mobility and once per turn immediately when you deal damage you can add the psionic die in force damage which can help you deal more damage so there's a bunch of different things you can kind of use that for you already get a lot of options at level three which is something that i like a lot i always like having options of things to do seventh level cyanites get telekinetic adept which lets you do a couple different things uh when you use the telekinetic strike so that's the one that you're adding the side eye in force damage to uh you can force a strength save to knock them prone which is pretty good or you can move them 10 feet in any direction if you want to just yeet someone I'm always a fan of yeeting, especially if you're near a cliff, because then... You've seen Looney Tunes, you know what happens. Uh, telekinetic movement lets you move things, uh, objects that are large or smaller, within 30 feet of you, and you can move it 30 feet, but it's going to diminish the size of your side eye, so it's going to drop it down. At this point, if you're at the 7th level, oh, it's still going to just be a D8, so it's going to go from a D8 to a D6, and then a D6 to a D4, and then you can't use it after you do the 4. Kind of risky to use it like that, I probably wouldn't, because I'd want to get as many uses out of my side eye as I could. Just once per turn, going 30 feet? moving someone who's willing or an object eh i don't know if it's super worth it i don't know if it's as good as reducing damage as a reaction or adding extra damage and possibly knocking them prone because there's no additional charge for the psionic thrust thing like it's not taking extra side eye you don't get any more side eye so i don't know Maybe you'll like it. So, uh, 10th level, pretty simple. Psy enhanced metabolism. You have resistance to poison and psychic damage, and you're immune to the poison condition. Uh, similar to purity of body, except instead of disease, you get the resistance to the psychic damage. Uh, and you don't get full immunity to poison damage. So it's a little bit worse than that. All right, uh, so Bulwark of Force lets you shield a number of creatures equal to your intelligence modifier and give them half cover uh, for a minute or until you're incapacitated. And you can only do it once per long rest, but then you can recharge it by decreasing the size of the psychic die. I kind of like how much all of this is related to just reducing the size of the psionic die. like, And that you can recharge that once per long rest so you can... Kind of, it's different than how other classes do things. It's interesting to look at, at the very least. I don't know off the top of my head, because I'm just reading this right now. So I don't know if it's better, but I hope it is, because I like good things. 
Telekinetic Master lets you cast the Telekinesis spell requiring no components. Uh, using your intelligence modifier, get it at the 18th level. It'll decrease the side eye by one. So you're starting at a D12. So that means it goes to a D12, a D10, D8, D6, D4, zero. And then you can start over again with your psionic replenishment. So you've got 10 uses of telekinesis per day. And telekinesis is a fifth level spell, I think. So 10 fifth level spell slots, basically. As long as you're only using them for telekinesis, not bad. Plus, you're going to have a bunch of freaking ability score improvements as a fighter. So you probably got good concentration because you've probably invested in your constitution. I would recommend for this build, uh, once again, always pick like dex or strength as a fighter. Probably dex, it's a little bit better. Then intelligence and constitution, and you have enough ability score improvements to invest in all three of those. So hopefully you're having a good time. Uh, once again, this is a rework of the Psychic Warrior. That is what Obi-Wan ended up being. And I think the Psychic Warrior is better. I think this is kind of an intention to nerf that a little bit to try and get it in a book. But if it gets in a book, I'll take it. The next option is the Soul Knife Rogue. Looks like they also have a psionic talent die, which I've been calling a side eye. Uh, maybe I shouldn't call it a side eye. Like you're just like looking at someone and making fun of them. Like, you know, I don't know if that's, I'm calling it a side eye. You know what? Committing. I'm committing. I am. So it looks like we've got uh, two different options. I'm not gonna re-explain the side eye. It looks like it does the same thing down here. Side bolstered neck. It looks like it's gonna basically be almost exactly like a bardic inspiration die. If you fail an ability check using something you're proficient with, you can add the psionic die to the roll. Again though, the way this is different from bardic inspiration is that doesn't get rid of the die until you roll the six on the D6 and then the four on the D4, so on and so on and so on. I'm starting to realize that this is gonna get much better the further on you you move because on a d6 obviously it's a one in six chance you get the six that lowers the die down if you get a one if you're at a d4 then it's going to be a one in four chance but by the time you hit the 17th level and it hits a d12 that's a one in 12 chance followed by a one in 10 chance followed by a one in eight chance followed by a one in six chance followed by a one in four chance then you refresh it because you want to refresh it you know whatever your other option is psychic whispers which lets you roll your side eye and you can communicate telepathically it has to be able to speak at least one language and it only lasts for an hour but that's great communication that's open messaging potentially for a full party especially if you're running kind of a more or smaller party campaign if you're doing like two or three people you're probably gonna get enough that you can go woo, 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 woo. so you also get psychic blades which basically solves a huge issue of rogue which is my damage is physical basically it lets you create a finesse simple melee weapon with a throne property and a normal range of 60 feet it deals 1d6 plus the ability modifier you used for the attack roll which is great in case you want to do the strength rogue the strogue the barbogue like on jason Voorhees. i wouldn't say this is a jason Voorhees build basically it's saying you don't have to use dex on your sneak attack if you don't want to but it's gonna be psychic damage, and then you can use your bonus action to do another attack that'll deal 1d4 psychic damage. And summoning these doesn't look like there's any penalty to doing it. It's just something you can do. You can just say, oops, I have swords now. So like I said, this is great because it fixes the issue that rogues can't deal non-magical damage because it deals psychic damage. And the sneak attack becomes whatever damage your attack was, so it becomes psychic damage and you just break people's brains. Very good. You get soul blades at level nine. Uh, this lets you do a homing strike, which lets you add your side eye to an attack roll. If you miss, if that causes it to hit, it's gonna decrease it down by one size, but hey, you knew that was probably happening anyway, it's fine. This one is really cool though, psychic teleportation. It lets you throw your weapon and then teleport to it. Kind of like Noctis in Final Fantasy 15, if you're familiar with that. As a bonus action, you put a Psychic Blade equal to five times the highest number on your Psionic Talent die. So at this point, it's going to be a D8. So that's going to be eight times five. So 40 feet that you can teleport as a bonus action, a little bit more than Misty Step, which is 30. Uh, and then it'll dock it down by one size. So if you want to use that again, then you can do 30 feet because it's six times five on the D6. And then if you want to do it again, you can do 20 feet. So it's, it's a bunch of Misty Steps on a Rogue. 
And you do it by throwing the sword and then teleporting to the sword, which I think is super cool. I'm very into it. Uh, 13th level, you get Psionic Veil, which lets you turn yourself invisible for 10 minutes. Uh, you can do that once per long rest for free, and then you can do it again by lowering your Psionic Talent die. Again, since you can recharge that once per long rest, that is really good. It's a lot of free invisibility on our rogue, which, spoiler alert, is going to benefit from that. At 13th level, I think that's 76 that you're getting to add to the damage, but it's a great way to set up for sneak attack. All right, last ability is Rend Mine, which lets you force a wisdom saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and dexterity modifier. That's different than the saving throw up here on the Cyanite, which is using your intelligence modifier. So they're, they're basically saying like, hey, don't worry, you can still just invest in your dexterity. Uh, who cares about your intelligence modifier? Because is there stuff that actually matters for your intelligence modifier? in this i'm not seeing any doesn't really look like this uh subclass actually cares about your intelligence modifier that's interesting anyway forces a wisdom saving throw and then stuns them until the end of your next turn which is basically stunning strike and it's stunning strike on a rogue who has sneak attack and when they have advantage on that melee attack they're gonna get to do their sneak attack 17th level i think is 8d6 9d6 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 that you're basically setting up and guaranteeing. Uh, you can do that once per long rest, and then if you want to do it again, you can lower your psionic talent die, your side eye, and again, at 17 level, you're at that D12, so that means D12 to D10, D10 to D8, D8 to D6, D8 to C D6 to D4. Reset, and then do it all again. This is very good. This is, I think this is much better than the fighter. This is better than the cyanite. This is the strongest one so far, but... Let's look at the sorcerer and see how that compares. All right, last thing we're getting into is the psionic soul sorcerer. This is a bunch of flavor for the psionic origins. Obviously, if you want to do that, that's fine. I personally just kind of come up with my own concepts and I think a lot of people do. But if you're having trouble coming up with a character concept, you kind of know what you want your build to be, but don't know what you want your character's backstory to be. Those tables are great for that kind of thing. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yuck that yum. You know what I'm saying? So first thing you get, hey, it's a side die. We know what the side die is. It's like, did you roll up? Did you roll up a psychic character? Is that a psychic character? Side die. So first thing you get uh, is psionic discovery, which lets you teach yourself a enchantment or divination spell for a number of hours equal to your roll on the side die. It's got to be from the sorcerer's spell list which is kind of a bummer. I kind of wish it was more like Magical Secrets, like Bard, so you could grab stuff from other spell lists, because I think other spell lists have different enchantment and divination spells. It also kind of encourages you to not take those spells while you're trying to build the psychic character. I don't know how I feel about that, if I'm being totally honest, but maybe that's not the one you want to use. Maybe you want to use Psychic Sorcery, so that you don't have to use verbal components. And if you roll your side eye and it's higher than the spell's level or equal to the level of the spell, then it doesn't require somatic or material components either. So if you're trying to save a little bit of money and not buy all those material components, I know a lot of DMs don't actually track material components, so might not be super useful in those campaigns, but it also does not specify that this has to be a sorcerer spell, I am noticing. Could you use this for cheap revivifies? I think so. I think you could if you multi-class into uh, something that would get revivify. I think Celestial Warlock does if you're trying to keep it all on your charisma modifier. Maybe you want to try that. Telepathic speech is kind of similar to Psychic Whispers, except it's picking one creature, and then you get to talk to them for a number of hours equal to what you rolled on the Psy die. So sixth level Psionic Sorcerers get Psychic Strike, which lets you roll your Psy die whenever you've cast a spell that deals damage and expends a slot, and you can add that number in Psychic Damage to the spell you cast. It can be pretty darn good, considering there's not really a limit on these. 14th level sorcerers get mind over body, which lets you spend one or more sorcery points and roll your psionic talent die to get a bunch of cool stuff. You can spend more sorcery points to get more of these effects on at a time, but for every sorcery point you spend, you'll be able to 
do one of these things. You can see any invisible creature within 60 feet of you, provided it isn't behind total cover. You gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed, and you can hover. You gain a swimming speed equal to twice your walking speed, and you can breathe underwater. Your body, along with any equipment you're wearing or carrying, becomes pliable. You can move through any space as narrow as one inch without squeezing, and you can spend five feet of movement to escape from non-magical restraints or being grappled. So that's a ton of different like little isolated spells that you're basically getting to cast on yourself with one sorcery point and your psionic die. The psionic talent die is to determine how many hours this lasts, but that lets you fly without concentration. This lets you swim and breathe underwater without concentration. It lets you see invisible. It's so good. It's so incredibly good. And even if it's just for an hour, it's good. If it's for an hour one, that's gonna bump up your side eye. If it's for multiple hours, it's for multiple hours. That's so good. That's a very good ability. So last thing you get is Psychic Aura, which lets you create a 30 foot radius around you for a minute that messes people up who get close to you. It's a creature uh, that you want to hit so you don't have to hit your friends with it. And you roll your Psionic Talent die and add your Charisma modifier and deal that amount of Psychic damage to them automatically there's no saving throw or anything like they're just going to take it after they take that damage their speed gets halved so you can really mess them up all right let's talk about what these different builds could be i think uh for the cyanite i mean it was obi-wan kenobi when it was the psychic warrior this is still a very good jedi thing uh i might use it for a certain tano ahsoka character Ahsoka Tano. I'll probably use it for Ahsoka Tano pretty soon. Uh, Soul Knife, like a psychic teleporting assassin. I kind of talked about Noctis uh, being very good for this. Uh, I could also see this being very good for Corvo Atano from Dishonored. So it kind of works for characters that I've already done and probably won't do again. I'll find another way to use this. I, I really like all the teleportation and the extra psychic damage. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Nightcrawler, it actually would be great for a Nightcrawler too. That's a third character that would, yeah, you know. Speaking of X-Men, Psionic Soul, that's your Professor Xavier. Professor Xavier would be perfect for all of this stuff, just dealing all that psychic damage. Thank you so much for watching this, everybody. Um, Sorry, I haven't done that other on Earth Arcana with the tattoos. It doesn't have subclasses. Maybe I'll do it eventually. I'm trying to limit how much work I'm doing currently just because I'm trying to quit smoking and that sucks already. So I am just trying to do as little work as possible, but I saw this new on Earth Arcana. It had subclasses. I wanted to talk about it and I like doing that. So it's not super stressful. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. We do these. Again, when there are new on Earth Arcana, I try to. Otherwise, we build other fictional characters, so you can check that out. On Thursday, we've got Scarlet Witch, so come back then, check that out, watch that video. It'll be very fun. Bye!